Hey guys, so um, this is a new thing I uh, added to Novarox pipeline. Uh, so it may look like a simple sphere, but it's actually a sine distance function. And you can find more on these here on Inigo's uh, website. You can find formulas for different primitives. Um, you can find how to uh, round the edges, how to repeat the shapes in space, how to mix them together and do some Boolean operations. And uh, yeah, so they're also implemented here in, on Shader Toy. Shader Toy is a cool website where you can actually write fragment shaders which are basically a small program that's run for all the pixels in an image, yeah, more or less. And uh, yeah, you can do a lot of uh, cool stuff. Uh, these primitives is only one of them. Um, you can do some uh, post uh, processing effects like the ones I showed you earlier uh, on my Facebook page. Um, and the cool thing about all this is that now you can more or less include these in uh, Neobarox pipeline. So you have here the shaders category. And uh, yeah, basically it looks like this. So you can activate the shader here. And then you can edit the code. Here you see the... Uh, inputs, the uniforms, the samplers, like the noise, cube map, and here the outputs that you must write, or at least some of them you must write. And you have some functions that actually uh, make it easier for you to output the roughness and metalness, for instance, of the, met of the material, or to um, uh, write the normal and make the object lit. Uh, here is the actual code. So this is read-only, you cannot modify it, but this will be included in the final code of the shader. And this is the uh, code that you write. Uh, and you need to add this, to have this main void main function. And yeah, let's uh, just start with this. So you, you can see it's a plain sphere. And this is done in the actual shader. So there's nothing you can see. There are no objects in the scene. Uh, so you basically shoot a ray through each pixel on the screen. And you compute where it intersects with the sphere by doing some uh, ray marching. Inigo also explains uh, the working, workings of ray marching. You can find a lot of documentation about it on the internet, how it works, how it should be done. Um, and yeah, so as you can see here, I have this uh, sign distance sphere uh, and uh, sign distance round box. Um, and in the map function, I'm actually uh, calculating two distances. A is the distance to the uh, round box, and B is the distance to the sphere. And right now I'm returning the sphere, but I could be just as well returning the round box. Uh, you can see that it works uh, even in perspective uh, projection. Um, okay, and I also have some operations between uh, uh, these functions, like the Boolean operations, and I could do, uh, for instance, add A and B. So now you see them uh, a union between between the two. I could also do the intersect. 
and of course I could do the subtraction. Um, yeah, so uh, there are other, as I said before, there are other functions like the repeat function, which basically um, repeats uh, the contents of a, in this case, a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube or something like that, uh, repeats them uh, indefinitely. Um, and if I uncomment this, you will see it appearing on the screen. So this is something that would be like really difficult to do with um, actual objects in the scene, even the Boolean operations are not always that easy to do. Um, so this gives you some uh, possibility to create uh, an environment or some objects um, that uh, are easier to create this way via programming. Uh, as you can see, there are different uh, layers, shader layers in the pipeline, and these ones are, uh, this one is done before the actual uh, rendering of these objects. This is actual geometry that you can interact with. So as you can see, you can select it, you can move them in space, but this one you cannot actually select, you can't do much with it, but you can still do something like placing an object on it. So you get the depth and the normal. So yeah, not really interaction with it, but you can actually use it to uh, create some real geometry on it. Yeah, so as I said, this one is done, uh, the shader, this shader layer is run before um, the rendering of the primitives. And as you can see, you need to write all these outputs basically the properties of the material, the color, the lighting, the thickness, the normals. These ones are not that important for this. You can leave them, uh, you can even not output them. And uh, there are other shader layers. For instance, this one will run after the uh, geometry objects are also added in a scene, but before compositing and getting this uh, final image with the lighting and the PBR materials. And then you have the final shader, which is actually something that applies on top of it all. And you can see it in action here. Uh, yeah, so you can load these, you can save them. Uh, yeah, so there's the flip page shader that, yeah, that definitely makes it easier to uh, uh, work in um, Neo Baroque. Yeah, uh, but it's a cool effect, and you might actually use it for some artistic effect. You have the sphere rise um, uh, shader, which actually gives you this fisheye uh, lens view that I showed you um, on shader toy. I just hit high res here so that it looks a bit better because uh, the fisheye just uh, um, uses the image and it kind of gets it pixelated. And you can also try for instance, the fog, which basically just does some um, uh, darkening or uh, composition with the fog as a function of, of depth in the final shader. And you can see that if I make new scene, uh, everything else disappears, but these ones, the shaders actually remain intact. And you have this uh, environment, let's say. So there's 
really nice things for the uh, for these generating geometry for instance here you can repeat with different um, uh, periods on each axis so on x axis I actually added a period of one so the box repeats itself more often than on uh, y and z axis um, yeah you can bring it back to three for instance or increase to seven and so on so yeah there's a lot of stuff that can be uh, done here and I'm just gonna show you a few other uh, shaders that I created or adapted so this one is uh, a, ma a major sponge um, and the, the nice thing about this is uh, that uh, in shader toy for instance you would need to write all the lighting and everything for it but in here you can actually apply filters that already exist in the rendering pipeline and are applied after the final shader so you can modify the gamma and the exposure you can add some noise you can even I don't know add the manga comics rendering and you have a bunch of them um, you can add for instance edge detect and you instantly get all these edge detection contours uh, ambient occlusion you can see it a bit better on um, on uh, orthogonal perspective um, yeah so you can uh, take advantage of all these um, of the existing rendering pipeline um, also for instance you can uh, so the important part for you to be able to add an object in the scene on this geometry that you generated with the shader is to actually so you can add it here and you somehow have have access to the position on the screen um, so what you need to actually do in the shader you need to output uh, the fragment depth here and you will have all this code I will share it with you so this is the basic code that you need for uh, ray tracing and you also have the uh, matrices the transform matrices for the viewport and perspective uh, so the projection so that's why it actually works in any case either orthogonal or projection uh, perspective view and I can also uh, for instance I adapted one of the uh, TDM's shaders on shader toy the seascape that some of you noticed um, yeah I should disable this one it's it's not perfect um, there are some issues with the um, uh, with the depth so for instance for this one I didn't write any depth so when I add an object it actually adds it to infinity or uh, on the screen so it's not uh, that well ported but uh, yeah I'll probably uh, do it in the future and show you how you should do all these uh, these things in order to get some uh, usable uh, let's say geometry from the shader so yeah that's it uh, the features will take a bit more I don't know polishing till they are usable as I uh, want them to be and then I'll uh, release the new version with uh, them in it so see you next time.